I'd like to give the floor to Joseph Yacoub, who is a professor in Syria. Uh, he grew up in uh, uh, Lebanon. He teaches at the uh, University of Lyon, German rights lecturer. He's uh, uh, also been in charge of the Memory Culture and Interculturally UNESCO uh, chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. After hearing uh, those excessively interesting presentations made by uh, uh, high personalities, I've felt the need to review my uh, prepared speech. And the more I heard, the more I was deleting sections from my speech, uh, pre prepared text. And I've actually ended up with only one aspect uh, that I think deserves to be presented here. Uh, I'll spend the 10 minutes talking about that aspect, which is an, anthro an anthropological aspect, which has been uh, touched upon, alluded to. Uh, uh, and what I want to talk about is, is this country of Iraq. What is Iraq? What is the country? What is this country? What is its culture? What is its civilization? And what has this country contributed to the world? And what can we do from a cultural point of view and from a civilizational point of view? What can we do to deal with the current problems that Iraq is, is, is facing uh, uh, and, and the barbaric forces that are trying to take over, what can we do to stop them? Let's start by talking about Iraq. Iraq obviously is the former Mesopotamia between the uh, Tiger and Euphrates and we're talking about a territory that's always been a major center uh, for civilization and culture. Some museums have been mentioned recently by, by one of the other speakers, but clearly uh, the contribution of this territory is huge and has always been huge. It has generated a lot of knowledge, a lot of social uh, and political uh, uh, innovation. It's the land of Sumer. It's the land of Abraham, the father of all monothe monotheistic uh, uh, religions coming from Ur in uh, Chaldea uh, in the south of Iraq. It's the land of Akkad. It's Babylonia. It's, of course, the land of Nineveh, which has just been mentioned. It's the former Assyria. All those uh, names that somehow have taken on a sort of mythical dimension when you hear them. It's the land where uh, Aramean has been spoken for 3,000 languages, a thousand years before Jesus Christ. Uh, that language was already uh, being used, and quite a lot of documents have been produced using that language. Hundreds, maybe thousands of books have been published, written to uh, uh, describe this glorious past. Another characteristic is that it's a holy land. Jerusalem is a holy city, but Mesopotamia is a holy land. It's a land of spirituality as well. If you read the Bible, uh, both the uh, Old uh, Testament and the Gospel, I mean the New Testament, mention all sorts of uh, aspects that refer uh, to that aspect. I come from the region of Khabur, the northeast of Syria, which I must say is also uh, uh, affected by uh, some extremist group. I come from an area of Khabur which is close to the river, and that is mentioned in the Bible. We can uh, quote Daniel or mention Daniel also. I mean, it's a land that is 
very, very, and always has been very spiritual. It's also a Christian uh, territory. We were talking about Nineveh just now. Well, in this case, we are talking about even in the Bible, Nineveh is mentioned. It's also a land of Islam. Uh, Shia, but also Sunni uh, Islam. It's a land of Muslim brotherhoods. Many brotherhoods were established there. And it's also a, a land of mysticism. Uh, you may have heard about Louis Matignon, who's written about it. It's the land of Kabbalah also. Uh, Karbala, sorry. Uh, and Najaf, uh, which are holy uh, or important places for spirituality and Muslim history. It's also a land from where missionaries have departed uh, to Asia, to China, in certain cases. And there were more than 60 million Christians there. It's also uh, the territory from where Shia have uh, departed. That's where they were from. That's where they originated. Uh, and, and I've been to Bangkok, and I've met Thai people who are Shia Muslims. They're very proud of uh, this whole history. It's also, uh, of course, the land of uh, uh, Yazidism, uh, Sanjar. I, I was in Syria, and uh, we were quite close to Jabal Sanjar. And there were a lot of uh, Yazidis uh, who came to the area. So it's a region that's always been excessively fertile. Uh, which has nourished diversity, linguistic. I mean, uh, I'm talking French, but I could speak Arabic. So this is a common aspect of our, our life. Syriac is not a language that's spoken by many people, but I could also speak uh, uh, Syriac. So it's an inventive land which is at the origin of many, many important messages. It's created the uh, Mandeans, the Kakai, uh, Turkmen's, of course, have been in Iraq f since the 11th century. And all the civilizations have been living together. You were talking about this dialogue of 1,400 years. Well, uh, all those communities have sort of mingled together, mixed. Uh, there's no region that is Shi'i or, or Sunni or, uh, I mean, the Nineveh region is a, a melting pot of communities. And if we need to protect people there, we'll have to protect Christians, we'll have to protect all of the other communities as well. So I would say that the whole of Mesopotamia should actually become uh, a common uh, uh, heritage, uh, uh, and that's a proposal that should be made to UNESCO, turn into the whole region, turn the whole region into uh, a historic heritage region. This diversity is actually recognized by the Iraqi constitution. Let us not forget that. Iraq has a constitution since 2005. And we talked about al muqawanat earlier. Uh, I mean, all of the Christians of Iraq are recognized by the Iraqi constitution, not just as Christians, but also for their nationality, which is a very important aspect. This has not been said here yet. The constitution of Iraq includes an article 
that talks about administrative duties and rights, Article 125. Then you've got Article 4, which recognizes uh, the Syriac language and the possibility to teach it in certain regions where it is administratively dominant. Christians, Chaldeans, Assyrians, have been recognized for the language, but also for their nationality. And I think it's an important aspect. And such a rich land, such a rich territory, such a rich region, because of its heritage, because of the quality of its communities, can it disappear and uh, lose, uh, let's say, the, the, the fight to uh, uh, obscurantism. Well, no, it can't. So what should we do? Unity is the only option. Common citizenship is the only option. And reconciliation is the option. Iraq must remain united because we are talking about a melting pot. Basra for example, you'll find a big uh, Shiite community, there are, uh, a there's a Sunni community, there are Christians, there are black people, I mean, there are black Iraqis, you know. Uh, Iraq is the country where the first revolt or rebellion of slaves took place. And, and those slaves at the time were African black people from Zanzibar who rebelled and uh, uh, well, have stayed there since then. So unity and reconciliation are key. And we need a political system that will somehow be based on two pillars. We need in Iraq a strong political power. We need also uh, a government that is able to take real decisions. And at the same time, we need decentralization and autonomy for the regions. So a strong central government and decentralization. Thank you very much. Merci, professor. Thank you to you, uh, Professor for helping us to breathe in the beauty of uh, Iraq uh, as a holy land, as a land of diversity, as a land of inventiveness. And I think it's been a very interesting description that you've just made. And I think the proposal that you made to turn Iraq into uh, a UNESCO uh, uh, heritage area, if you want, is uh, certainly one result we could derive from this conference. We have uh, one last uh, speech before the questions from the audience, and maybe, yes, also a break. <laughs> that could be useful. From the Director General for uh, Asylum uh, from the Government of Kurdistan, uh, uh, 